My name is Randolph Curtis Delvo Jr. This is my dad, Randy Sr. He served in the United States Navy on a patrol boat during the Vietnam War. I don't know much about my dad's life in the military, but I know he was proud to serve his country and that he had nightmares almost every time he went to sleep. When my dad took his own life on September 13, 2013, his suicide caused me to think about the many families that experienced the same things mine did, and all the soldiers that never really left the battlefield. What's going on, brother? Long time no convo. I'm okay, just maintaining, trying to take it slow. I hope you're doing all right. Just the other day, I saw your kids and your wife. She asked me to write. Man, your son looking good. He growing overnight. Your daughter gorgeous, still holding mama hand tight. Trying to keep my words, stand tall and hold on. But I almost broke down when Obama said you was coming home. I praise the truth, really for the sake of you. Been gone so long, the sky don't seem as blue. Just remember, Christ strengthens me and you. I pray you make it back to the ones that love you. I love you, bro. Today I work with Operation Rally Point, a nonprofit based in the Atlanta suburb of Decoula, Georgia. We help veterans transition back into civilian life, no matter how long ago they ended their service. I normally do my work from home in Wisconsin, but this summer our CEO, Brandon Watts, invited me to Georgia to talk to some veterans about their separation from military life and the challenges that vets face when they leave. I also got to ride along on one of our regular outreach missions. We bring much needed supplies and clothing to the people on the streets of downtown Atlanta in order to build connections with the homeless community that are invaluable to our work. It's pure love. Absolutely, it's pure love. It's especially tough for those of us who serve to watch our comrades end up in that kind of situation. And they suffer because they don't have the coaching, the mentorship, and the knowledge to pull themselves back up from the depths. And being the infantryman and, and being the serviceman in general, it's an idea of service, an idea of, of doing good for not only your family and, and your friends, but and not only your country, but for the world. We went down there just our rucks in the middle of the night and sat down with people and talked to them just to find out, just to get to know them. In doing so, we learned a lot of things. What we've come up with was, was a plan to create an organization that would not only house homeless veterans and transitioning veterans, especially in order to prevent homelessness, but also provide some of that education, provide some of that mentorship, that coaching, but also provide some resource-based uh, program that would allow us to connect to already existing programs. There was a, a time after my transition where I went through a, a divorce. Uh, wife and uh, I wasn't able to have my wife and kid anymore and I went through a, a mental turmoil where I was actually homeless basically living out of my car for a, a couple weeks. Uh, there was a, a time where I was actually you know had nowhere to go and so I actually found um, you know through own personal resources my own location. I have a little bit of background with homelessness and it is it's not fun it's chaotic um, especially when you're dealing with other issues as well especially when you have kids and you're trying to stay on the right path, but it's a little, it's a little rough when you don't have stability, and uh, that's hard for any soldier uh, when you don't have stability. Atlanta's homeless population is the ninth largest in the country, and the fifth largest population of homeless veterans. Nearly half of the veterans that have lived in Atlanta have been homeless at least once after separating from the military. For veterans, it's it's even more of a challenge because they have come out of a very, very um, disciplined, uh, structured environment. And when they uh, leave the, the military, if they don't get the proper transition assistance, they can find themselves in one of those situations where, it's, where they're insecure. And because of their nature, their character, and the values they developed in the military, often they're unwilling to seek help. And so there's a greater propensity for the veterans to, to wind up in, in a homeless situation. 
as a result of that. One of the biggest things I've noticed with homelessness, you know, not only just in the veteran community, but what I understand about the homelessness epidemic, especially here in Atlanta, is that there's a lot of people who are not able to find jobs or they have addiction or certain aspects in their life with mental disorders that are not allowing them to progress forward in a, in a career and actually maintain that. And so without any income coming in or the ability to generate an income, they unfortunately do have to uh, live on the streets. When veterans return home from service, life changes drastically. They have to prepare for a very different place from the one they left both mentally and physically. Soldiers that cannot hit the ground running can find themselves in a survival situation that is difficult to recover from without support. Quite often, it's difficult for soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines to express themselves to people who haven't served. It's difficult for them to tell the stories of how they got where they are to someone who cannot fathom what it means to be in a combat zone. When you have that structure in the military, that you know what to wear, you know when to wear it, you know where to be, you know what time to be there, you know what you're going to eat, your food's provided, your homes are provided, everything's provided for you, all your bills are paid for you, and if you set up allotments, you don't have to worry about anything. Anything you get in your check is a uh, spending money. And when you get out, you've got to figure all those things out, and you got to figure it out fast. Uh, you know, and if you, sometimes we can't. It gets overwhelming, and they shut down, and they lose it. It's very overwhelming. It can be very overwhelming, and then you put that on top of anxiety, PTSD, depression, whatever, and it just, I mean, it's, it's like a ticking time bomb. We get, of course, a transition assistance program when we separate, but what then? You know, we're used to, in the military, being told what to do, how to, you know, where to be, what to eat, and everything else like that for the most part. Once we get out, I feel that we don't have the right type of leadership leading us anymore. And in the career field, outside of the military, you're really running into a lot of civilian leaders trying to communicate with military leaders. So most of the time, military doesn't even want to be associated with that. So that can lead to a, a larger unemployed portion. You know, so you say you'll be back around and trying to get this job. Man. Yeah, well, well, I'm trying to get a job at convention center. Well, I, I really have Veterans bring a set of skills to the workplace that are unique and beneficial to any business. Leadership, attention to detail, and discipline are just a few on top of the specialized abilities every soldier has. But not every soldier has the ability to translate the value of those skills to a potential employer. To complicate the issue, many employers are also wary of hiring veterans because of stigmas that society places on the military. Then you start realizing when you come out, like, I can't tie a tie, I don't know how to properly do a resume. Uh, just basic etiquette in the normal job force, you don't know how to do so, you feel inadequate. And then that's where a lot of the homelessness will come from because you just don't want to do it. We don't necessarily know how our skills translate. So we like to help, help them understand how they translate and how to go into an interview and tell people what you can do for their company as opposed to, you know, look at my fruit salad on my chest. This is what I did in the Army because they don't care. So let's, let's give them what they're looking for and show them the skill sets that we have and how we can affect their company. It's the mantra of leave no one behind. We do that in combat. We need to also focus on doing that outside in the civilian world as well. Now, once we do get out, we have to build resources and, and build organizations to actually help and bring them out of all the negative places we're at and actually get them to that prosperity and, and focusing on building their lives back, their families back, their businesses up uh, to make sure that they're actually successful in every aspect of life. Atlanta's problem, though disproportionate, is not isolated. Veterans of our armed services have signed a blank check to the people of our country in exchange for a promise that they can come back home and participate in the peaceful, prosperous society they help us preserve. This promise continues to go unfulfilled for many of our veterans that are most in need. If we have the social responsibility to help try to fix problems our society has yet to solve, we cannot ignore this. What we're looking at is, in order to, to end homelessness, you have to first prevent it, you know, for the most part. Um, the, the hard part of homelessness is those who have been out there a long time are going to incur many, many other issues, including drug addiction, alcohol addiction, um, and mental health. Our first initial conversation with uh, Operation Rally Point was that instead of just giving them handouts and having them become a crutch, 
yeah, you give them a boost in the first couple months, and then you're actually going to be giving them life-sustaining skills of how to generate income, how to pay their bills properly. That's one of the greatest things that we can link up together as a financial professional and Operation Rally Point is to give these guys basic education and fundamentals of how finances work, how money works. And also provide that support chain that we had in the military. Provide that outlet when a soldier is suffering, struggling, and feels like he's got nowhere to go. You can call us, call Operation Rally Point. We'll be there. I urge you to join the fight now, even if you've never served. Contact a veterans organization in your area today and pledge your time, resources, or your dollars to the causes that help them most. Be good, brother. We'll see you again out here. You can find Operation Rally Point online at oprallypoint.org or at oprallypoint on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.